Welcome to part 11 of Circle Jump. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about monetization in mobile games, especially when it comes to free games like Circle Jump's going to be. So you basically have two options, in-app purchases or ads. Since this is going to be an ultra-casual game, there's not really a place for in-app purchases. We don't have currency or anything like that. So we're going to look at how to implement ads in your game. And I want to stress this, if you want them. I know ads can be unpopular, but this is a decision for you as the game developer to make when it comes to your individual game. We'll also look at how to disable ads if you need to do that. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is go over to Google AdMob and create an account. So just click sign up and set up your account. And when you're signed in, you can make an app, which I made an app for Circle Jump. And in this app, you're gonna make two ad units a banner ad, and an interstitial ad. So make one of each of these. When you click select, you can just choose the format, give it a name, just call it banner, and it's gonna set up a ad ID for each of those. That's what we'll be using in our code to tell our program which ad to show. Now Godot doesn't have any ad functionality built in, so there's no way for it to talk to the AdMob API to display the ads. So we're gonna need to use a plugin. And the plugin we're going to use is this one, which I'll put a link for below. And it contains the code we need. And if you go down and look at the documentation, you can see the API reference. There are some new methods we'll get that will let us show and hide banners and so on. Now to use a module like this, you're going to need a custom Android template, the one you, one you downloaded when you downloaded the export templates from the editor do not include this module so it won't work and if you want to compile your own custom export templates the instructions are here in the documentation it does require setting up a build system and downloading some android sdks and java and so on so it's not necessarily for the faint of heart but it is something good to know especially later when we get close to release where we can disable certain parts of Godot so that we can optimize the size of our APK. But for now, there is another GitHub repo here, which I'll also link below, which has some pre-compiled templates, including this plugin. So you just go here to this repo, which I'll link below, and you click on the releases tab. And you'll see here's some Android templates compiled for Godot 3.1.1, which is what you should be using. And that's the thing, if you're using a different version, you've got to have Android templates that match the same version. So if you're using a custom compiled version of Godot, you're going to have to custom compile your Android templates. So I'm going to download this zip file, and we'll be good to go. It's back over in Godot, now we need to configure things to use this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our project settings in the Android section. And in the Android section is where you are going to specify any custom Android modules that you're using that you want the engine to load when the app starts. And back over on the documentation for this module, you can see if you scroll down here, this is the module name. So if you copy that, the directions tell you to edit the engine.config or project.godo, but you've got to close the project and open it again. So instead, you can just paste that right into the modules list here. And then you would put a comma and separate other ones if you have more than one module to load. So that's that. And now over in our export settings for Android, we want to tell it to use those templates that we downloaded and not the default ones. So you can set that right here. And there are two of them, the debug and the release. So if I click the folder here, I can go to my downloads folder, which is where I downloaded this and opened that zip. And in there, you can see there's a debug and a release APK. So select both of those and you're ready to go there. So now our game, when it starts on Android, will load that module and what it does is it loads that module as a singleton. 
and we can access that singleton to show and hide ads and retrieve information and so on. So we're going to go to our singleton that we made, the settings singleton, and we're going to add our ad code here. And the first thing we want to do is initialize the module. So we're going to start with a variable to hold the reference to the add mod module. We're going to add a, a boolean called real ads. This is whether we want to show test ads or real ads. And so while you're testing, you want to keep this false. And once you're ready to release and actually put it up on the app store, you can change this to true. And then uh, banner top is a value to set when the when the banner appears. Do we want it to appear at the top of the screen or the bottom? So I'm going to put false for that. And then we have two variables here for our add um, our add banner ID, which is a string extra equal there, and our add interstitial ID. These are two strings that you're going to get from your add mob configuration. And then one more, I'm going to add an enable ads flag so that we can turn that on and off. So you can go over to your add mob account and copy, hit the copy button and paste your ad unit IDs in here. I'm not going to do that in here because that's something that you should keep private. So if you're saving your source code on GitHub in a private repo, you shouldn't put your ad banner IDs in here. So I'm going to put some temporary ones right now just for this purpose of recording this demo, and then I'm going to delete them. So, but paste yours in there. And then we're going to make a ready function here so that when the singleton loads, it can do something. And the first thing it needs to do is make sure that that module is there because if the module is not present we want to ignore it so we want to check if the engine has the singleton which is named add mob and if it does then we can load it into our variable reference so engine dot get get singleton add mob I misspelled add mob up there Good start. So now we have a reference to it, right? We can call addmob.init, and we're going to in initialize it with our real ads boolean, and we'll also pass the instance ID of our currently running game. Then we're going to call addmob.loadBanner. Oh, sorry. In in add mob code, they're using camel case. So, load banner, and we'll use our add banner ID, and we will use our boolean whether we want the banner to be at the top or the bottom. And then we'll also call add mob dot load interstitial to load the interstitial ID as well. So that'll load both of them. So now we need a way to show and hide uh, the banner. So we're going to define a show add banner method, which is going to, if the add mob singleton is present and enable ads is on, then we're going to call add mob dot show banner and hide the banner. do that we want to say if add mob add mob dot hide banner and then for the interstitial we need a show add interstitial that we can call and that's going to say if add mob is present and enable ads then we're going to say add mob dot show interstitial and then we need a way to know when the interstitial ad is closed so if we define a callback for that it's on interstitial closed then we can say if add mob 
and enable ads. Add mod, or I'm sorry, we'll call a show ad banner. So we can put the banner back up after they get the interstitial at the end of the game. And now in our main.gd, we just need to tell it where we want to show these ads. So for example, when we start a new game, we're going to want to call settings.hide ad banner. And then when we die, we want to show on jumper died, we want to show the interstitial. So settings show add interstitial. And that should be all we need to do. So let's give it a try. So here I'm streaming my phone screen to my desktop here, and you can see the ad is showing up at the bottom of the screen. When we play, it goes away. And when we die, we get an interstitial ad which when we close it, we're back to the menu and the banner ad is there again. So the other thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to enable and disable ads in the app, just like you can ena enable and disable sound. So I'm going to make this variable here for the enable ads. I'm going to make this into a set get. And then that way we can control what happens when you turn it on and off. And so what we want to happen when you set this is we'll set the, the variable. And then if uh, enable if you set it to true, then I want to show add banner. Right? You might have you're in the menu screen, it's disabled right now. And if you set it to false, then it was probably then it was on, right? So if you set it to false, we're going to hide add banner. And then if you change it to false, then interstitial won't close won't show and everything like that. So we just need a button now in our settings to turn that on and off. So let's open up our settings screen. Right, I want to put that button here, but I only have two rows of buttons. So let's open up our base screen and I'm just going to duplicate I'm going to duplicate this and put another button row in the middle. All right, name of it doesn't matter. It's so on my settings screen. Then let me save that. Now on my settings screen I've got a second row here and I'm going to add a regular old button. And then I'm going to do some quick configuring here. Okay, so I just made a button here with the text disable ads, and I set all of its custom styles to stylebox empty. I don't care about any of the button styling. And then I also added a custom font to it, size of 48, so I could have the words there. And then, so when I click that, ads will go away, and the button text will change to enable ads. So that means we need to register this button in our screens scene where we register all of our buttons and we process whichever one is clicked. So now we can match based on the button name. I don't think I gave it a button name, so let's give that button a name. We'll call that ads. Add back to here. So if we press the ads button, what should happen? Well, settings.enable ads should toggle. And then if we set it to true, then we want the button text to change to disable ads. Otherwise, we want the button text to change to enable ads. So just a quick test of that. If I click it, changes, changes. OK. And a quick test on the phone. There's my screen. There's my ad on the screen. If I go into my settings, 
and I disable ads, it disappears. So I should be able to play, lose, and not see an interstitial. But if I go back over here and enable ads, they come back. Cool. So that gives you a way to enable and disable ads whenever you want. And I'm going to leave that on there because the goal of this game is learning and not actual revenue generation. So I'll allow people to just turn off the ads when they download this app. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.